This is the chapter on concussions and athlete safety, featuring Dr. Michael Stewart, USA Hockey's Chief Medical Officer. Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Stewart. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for USA Hockey, Professor and Vice Chairman of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at the Mayo Clinic, and a Medical Supervisor for the International Ice Hockey Federation. I'd like to speak to you about concussion because coaches are often the first responder when an athlete is concussed on the ice. And it's important that they understand the symptoms and signs of a concussion. It's critical that they remove a concussed athlete from play because the risks of returning to a game or practice after a concussion has occurred could be very severe, including the second impact syndrome. Concussions in sport is an increasing problem, possibly due to better recognition of the concussed athlete. We're also concerned that there's a four times increased risk of concussion to an athlete who has sustained their first concussion. Also, repeated concussions are usually more severe and cumulative damage can occur, which has long-term effects on the brain. Also, youth and women hockey players appear to be at the highest risk. A concussion is a traumatic brain injury. There's no such thing as a minor brain injury. A player does not have to be knocked out to have a concussion. In fact, less than 10% of concussed athletes actually lose consciousness. So what I'd like to do is talk about concussion mechanism, the vulnerability of the youth athlete, and how to prevent concussions. We'll then discuss how to diagnose and initially manage a concussion as a coach at the rink. We'll talk about concussion follow-up evaluation and how we determine when an athlete can safely return to play. Concussions typically occur from a blow to the head, but it could be a blow to anywhere in the body where a force is transmitted to the head so that the brain actually moves inside the skull. And the linear and rotational acceleration of the brain can damage the nerves called the axons. Typically in hockey, concussions occur to players who don't have the puck or have just released the puck. Often, it's a blow to the head from the shoulder or an elbow. The most vulnerable players appear to be those who are hit at open ice and are not anticipating the collision. Also, concussions occur frequently from illegal collisions, such as boarding, charging, checks from behind, head hits, elbowing, and high sticks. The youth hockey player is more vulnerable because the brain of a young athlete is more susceptible to a concussion. It's also harder to diagnose a concussion in young people because they often don't report their symptoms. So we rely on their parents to help us determine if they're acting differently, etc. Also, the youth brain takes longer to recover, is more likely to sustain a second concussion, and of course, the long-term uh, consequences of athletes receiving multiple concussions could have uh, effects on their function later in life. Every youth hockey player is an athlete, but also a student. And we have to keep that in mind because a concussed youth athlete also not only wants to return to sport, but they have to go back to school, they have to perform, they have to learn, they have to develop socially. So the injured youth brain needs to be taken into consideration, not only for sports, but for school and also their social activities. That completes the video portion of this segment. Now let's move on.